eggs are back in the news again, and now they cause diabetes. In this video, I'm going to explore this these new news headlines you may have seen out there in the media and explain to you what it actually means, why it's actually going on, and what you should actually do about it. I'm Dr. Ken Berry, a family physician with 20 years of clinical experience, and we're going to explore does eggs, do eating eggs cause diabetes in this video? For every video I make for this channel, I put the information through three tests before I'll make a video about them. First of all, the common sense of the issue. Secondly, the paleoanthropological evidence about how humans have behaved for the last 250,000 years. And then finally, the meaningful research. And so all this news that you may have been hearing about eggs causing diabetes are based on a new study out of China that was published in a, in a medical journal. Uh, the actual article itself is still behind the paywall. You'll have to pay a few hundred dollars to get access to the full article, but you can read the title and the abstract on their website. And I put a link down in the show notes so you can take a look at that. You might remember back to the last 20 years of news articles that tried to convince us that eating eggs would cause heart attacks and strokes because eggs are high in cholesterol, therefore it would make you have a heart attack. We've pretty much destroyed that myth. Every now and then you'll hear a plant-based researcher uh, mumbling about this, but you don't see the explosive news stories like you did in decades past. And now they're trying to say, oh no, well, eggs cause diabetes and so you should avoid eggs. It seems like the underlying message from all of the research coming out from plant-based researchers that you should just avoid eggs. They're somehow magically bad. Uh, we used to think it was cholesterol, now it's diabetes. What will it be next? So let's, let's talk about each of the three tests, the litmus tests that I put things through before I make a video. First, the common sense of the matter. And so as you can see with this diagram, the macronutrient breakdown of eggs, they are super low in carbohydrates. So there's virtually no sugar or starch in an egg. So how are they gonna raise your blood sugar? That on its face just makes no sense on a common sense argument, but let's not stop there and let's not judge prematurely. Now let's look at the paleoanthropology. Every shred of paleoanthropological evidence shows that hominids, and you're a hominid, have eaten as many eggs as they could get their hands on for the entirety of our existence on this planet for millions of years. So, uh, you know, for, for all that time, eggs were great, eggs were fine, eggs were healthy, but now, uh, here's the research that says, oh, no, eggs cause diabetes. So you would think that our ancestors would have developed diabetes from high egg consumption millennia ago, and we'd be, be extinct as a species if this were now the actual truth. And then thirdly, the meaningful research. So let's look at this research study a little bit and talk about why it might be misleading. So this, this research study publication is based on observational research. So they basically uh, got a lot of people, and there's a very large number of people in the study, and they had them fill out food frequency questionnaires, which would ask a question like, how many eggs on average do you consume a month? Okay, now if I were to ask you right now, how many eggs did you eat last month? How close of a, uh, how accurate of an answer could you give me? You could probably give me a guesstimate, just like every other human on the planet, but you could not tell me unequivocally how many eggs you've eaten in the last month. And so oftentimes these researchers will ask questions like, how many eggs do you average eating a month over the last year or over the last five years? Well, you can quickly see that's a, that's a foolish question. You can never answer that question objectively and with a true black or white number. So the very data that they're using to then crunch in the, in the models that they're using in this study are based on fictional numbers because nobody can remember. Uh, so there, there, there are ways that this research could be done that would give you black and white numbers uh, to, that you could then crunch and maybe come up with a meaningful association, but they didn't do that in this study. They asked very vague questions about your past egg consumption that no one can re remember how many eggs they've eaten uh, in the last week, much less in the last year. 
So right off the bat, the data they use for this study is, is very suspect and I don't trust it at all. Secondly, all the researchers in this study and in most of the Hedrabad studies are plant-based. They believe that a plant-based diet, a diet where you don't eat animal foods, they believe that's healthy. And when you do observational research, there's no blinding and there's no control in that research. And that's, that is the best way for a researcher's bias, their personal beliefs, to actually slip into the results of the study. Now, these researchers are not evil. There's, I don't think there's a big conspiracy. I think that they're just human beings. And the reason that we control research and blind participants and researchers in studies is because we know human nature is, is that you think you're right. And so these plant-based researchers, they believe in their heart of hearts that they're right about this. And that belief leaches into the research results. And so this is an observational study. There is no control. There's no blinding. There's, there's no way to protect the research data from the underlying beliefs of the researchers. So if you actually read this research paper, if you pay the hundred bucks or whatever to get access to it, you'll see right off the bat that these researchers do not say anywhere in this paper that eating more eggs increases your risk of developing diabetes. They don't say that. They say there appears to be an association between eating more eggs and developing diabetes. So they don't in any way attempt to say that eggs cause diabetes. But here's the real problem. Most normal humans, probably you, you don't read research studies. You don't read epidemiological research or controlled research for that matter. What you read is news headlines right? And so you're busy doing whatever you do in your life and you see a headline like this pop up on your newsfeed on social media, or you see a headline like this pop up on the, the local news, or you see a headline like this pop up uh, when you're reading a magazine or a newspaper. And just by reading the title of this article, which is what most of us do, be honest, you know, you just read the title and move on. It, it blatantly says, Eating eggs causes diabetes. Eating egg leads to diabetes. Eating eggs increases your risk of diabetes. But that's not what this research study showed at all. They showed that there's a possible association, okay? And so <clears throat> when the editors of the websites and the, the news magazines and the news channels get hold of this, they're not scientific researchers. They don't understand the difference between observational research and control research. They don't understand the difference between association and causation. So it falls on you, the reader or the viewer, to, to have to know the difference. Does this, did this study really show causation or did it just show a possible association? And this research study uh, just showed a possible association. They, this research study did not control for total calorie intake. It did not control for what foods they ate with the eggs. And so in my opinion, it wasn't the eggs causing the diabetes. It was the rice and the bread and the hash browns and the bun, the muffin, the sandwich that they were eating the eggs with. That's what increases the risk of diabetes, not the eggs. And the, this research study does nothing to tease apart what did they eat with the eggs? What was their carbohydrate intake? What was their calorie intake? None of, that's, none of that is men mentioned in this research study. Therefore, this research study, in all honesty, shows nothing. That's what it shows. It shows a possible weak association between the number of eggs you eat and your risk of developing diabetes. So back to the common sense of this is issue, there is actually a huge movement afoot all around the world of people eating a low carb diet, eating a banting diet, keto, ketovore, carnivore, and these people eat lots of eggs, right? And there's, there's hundreds of thousands of these people, if not millions of people, and they're all eating a, a high fat, moderate protein or a high protein, moderate fat diet that's very, very low in carbohydrates. And they're actually eating lots of eggs and improving their di existing diabetes or reversing their existing diabetes. They're wearing either a continuous glucose monitor or they've bought a glucometer that they do finger pricks with to check their blood sugar. And they actually are seeing a very strong association that the more eggs they eat and the fewer carbs they eat, 
the lower their blood sugar becomes. And so you've got hundreds of thousands, if not millions of anecdotal cases of people out there saying, uh, on contraire, the more eggs I eat, the lower my blood sugar is. And so when you see a news headline like this, you can't believe this because the, the, the authors and the editors at these news sites, they don't understand how to interpret research, scientific research. And so, and they also want their titles to be very clickbaity, right? And so if they say, observational studies shows a slight possible risk of association between eating eggs and uh, diabetes, you're not gonna click on that, that's boring. That doesn't really tell you anything. It says, oh, it might be a small possible association. That's not exciting. Who's gonna click on that? No one. And so they wind up putting out titles that say, eating an egg causes diabetes. And that's clickbait worthy. You're like, whoa, what the crap? I better, I better click on that and read it. So you read the title and maybe two lines of the article and then you click away, but you're left with the underlying uh, belief, <clears throat> eating eggs causes diabetes. I, maybe I should eat fewer eggs. Nothing can be further from the truth. I encourage you personally to either get a glucometer or a continuous glucose monitor if you are pre-diabetic or diabetic and eat three eggs, eat six eggs, hell, eat a dozen eggs and check your blood sugar 30 minutes, an hour and two hours later. You're gonna see that your blood sugar almost doesn't move whatsoever. Unlike the spike in your blood sugar, if you eat the muffin or the sandwich or the hash brown, the potatoes, or drink the glass of orange juice, or eat any other starchy, carby foods, your blood sugar is gonna spike sky high if you do that. So that immediately gives you personal positive feedback that eating eggs in no way contributes to the development of diabetes and, and definitely doesn't make your diabetes worse. On the other hand, eating eggs, eating more eggs, eating lots of eggs actually makes your diabetes better. Or if you're non-diabetic, it just keeps you from ever becoming diabetic. Now, how many of your friends and loved ones have been tricked by these articles that they've read? Oh my God, eating eggs causes diabetes. I better avoid eggs. You can help to kill this myth in its tracks before it's ever created by sharing this video on your social media, sending it in an email, a WhatsApp, a text message. You can do all that stuff and just stamp this myth out before it ever has a chance to grow into the monster that the old monster was of, oh, eating eggs will give you a heart attack. It raises your cholesterol. You can stop this foolishness right now in its tracks by sharing this video. I hope this video helped you understand what's going on. Uh, like I said, I put a link to the research down in the show notes. If you'd like to help me spread this message, one of the ways you can do it is by subscribing to this channel and clicking that little bell right beside the subscribe button. And then you can enjoy the two or three videos that I post new each and every week. This is Dr. Barry. I'll see you next time.